guys are going to like this. I've been really looking forward to this. I'm going to try this a little differently. Instead of making a two hour video of me doing this, I'm going to start and stop the video at key points and tell you what's going on so that the video will be a little more condensed. I was going to try to set up a live stream, but it's 4 o'clock in the morning and um, nobody even knows it would be there, so what would be the point? I might do that for the next one. This is something special. This is something I was not expecting. It's something I really, really wanted because I think this is going to be very popular. Do you see what this is? You know what that is? CR10 Mini. That's right. The all metal frame Creality CR10 Mini. 200 by 300 by 300. This thing's cool. I'm going to pull everything out of here, spread it out on the table, and I'll be right back. In what we've come to expect from Creality, it is three pieces. You have the base platform. By the way, it's 300 by 220 by 300. Very nice. Your brain box with your marked plugs that plug into all the stuff here. And you have the gantry. Something I did notice, it uses smaller steppers. These are not your normal full size steppers. That one's smaller and this one's smaller. Uh, this looks closer to normal size and that one's smaller. So it uses more compact stepper motors. That's interesting. I wonder if they drive them a little harder to make up for the smaller size. That's interesting. It is pretty compact. Not that compact. I would have to measure it, but it's, it looks about as big as a CR10, to be honest. It's not that much smaller. I will put it side by side when I'm all done. But I'm going to unwrap, show you real quick what's inside the goodie box, and then just do a little step by step. I like the plastic spool. The other ones came with the paper spool. The plastic spool's nice. i got to figure out how to get that out of there. So I will be right back. Let's go over the parts that aren't part of the three parts of the printer. Your base, your gantry, and your brain box. Comes with the spool filament. Pretty decent sized spool. I don't know how heavy that is. I'd have to weigh it this empty after I've used it all. Because <laughs> they will get used. And this is the goodie box. So, actually it looks like there is some instructions. Although, you don't need much with a printer this small. This um, already assembled, basically. You have your roll of tape, your T-bars and spool holder, memory card reader, power cord, spare parts, quality guarantee, whatever, spool holder, USB cable, spatula. Spool holder, same as CR10. This is all the same as the CR10 stuff. Your Allen keys, the longer ones with the ball ends, thank you. Nice set of nippers, some zip ties, the acupuncture. <laughs> I'm going to leave that in the box or I'll end up poking myself with it. And a spare PTFE tube. Is it the right size? Let's see. Where do they give us the funky size? Ooh, looks like they gave us the correct size PTFE tube. Good job, Creality. It shows that you are listening. Alrighty. And a couple of things of note. The gantry does come with the, um, the Z-Rod disconnected from the coupler. In the past, you would have these couplers get stretched. And the reason that happened was... At some point during shipment, this got pulled up and it would stretch the coupler. So they now ship it with the coupler disconnected and the grub screws do appear to have stayed in place. So you will have to slide that in there and tighten down those grub screws. But we'll get to that as it comes. So I'm going to prepare for the next step and I'll be back. Previously, it comes with the washers that we will not be using. They'll go in the spare parts bag and it comes with one extra thumb spinner for the spool holder. Might as well install that really quick. Right, 
just spins on like that. I'll be switching over to the Ender style later on, but for now we're going to build it stock. This spins off. Let's pop it through here. And that is it. Your spool holder assembly is done, and you can now mount the spool to the printer. I'll be back for the next step. Before we continue on to the next step, one of the first things that you need to check is the bed. Remember, these use concentric bolts. It's basically a, a miniature CR10, and as you can see, this one wobbles. Can't have that. So we look underneath here, flip over, and you can see these are concentric, concentric, concentric. So as we can see, these looked pretty tight. That's loose. If you grab the one wheel and grab the other wheel, if you turn it, it's loose. Tighten. There we go. There we go. Still too loose. Uh, basically, if you grab the wheel, you should be able to make the printer go. I'll turn that one up a little more. When I grab the wheel and turn it, the whole thing moves. That's how you know you got it. Same thing with this one. Give it a little harder jerk, it shouldn't be able to come loose. And you should be able to do that for both wheels, although possibly not to all of them on both sides. I really wish they would just make them all concentric because what really ends up happening is these three end up supporting the entire bed in reality these don't do a whole lot I would guess if I were to loosen this one the other two would grab a little more yep there we go So these two are good. These two are good. Now we tighten this one up just enough until this wheel grabs. It's binding. There we go. We're good. Let's see if it wobbles. Make sure you test it this way and this way, up and down. No wobble, it moves free and clear, no resistance, no binding, you're good to go. Glass over so that the tape is now facing up and is ready for you to use. And as with the other printer, your binder clips hold it down. I checked with a ruler and this one does appear to be flat. So whether that means quality control is improved or I just simply got a flat one, the glass appears to be nice and flat. I'll of course later put some print and Z on here. Next step is to attach the gantry, which I'm going to do next using the four large bolts that come in the bag. For that we are going to insert the rod into the coupler and tighten the couplers. Big size up really. It's a big one. No, it is that size. I had it right. I 
I like to tighten them loosely first and then crank them so that they're sitting evenly inside the circle. I would check the ones on the stepper as well, make sure they're tight. There we go. Next step is to attach the gantry. I install through here, holding it here until I get it aligned. You should be able to spin it in by hand. Uh, when you go to do the second one, sometimes it will resist. Bring your hand down here and grab the other side and wiggle it around because this will twist as you can see and you wiggle it around until the second hole lines up and you can turn it in by hand. When you have them both in by hand, you turn them down with the wrench but you do not tighten them because if you tighten them, it will be difficult for you to move the other end to align the bolts on the other end with the gantry in the base. So I'm going to leave you recording so you can see me do that. You can even look through here and see it. There it is. And you should be able to hold it and spin it in by hand just like that. If you can't spin it in by hand, stop, check, make sure you're not cross-threading. Because that's a quick way to destroy aluminum. You don't want to cross-thread. There we go. All four are now in, which means I can now tighten all four of them all the way. But first, get them all snug. And it looks like this has enough room to use the ultimate print knob, so I will definitely be printing the set for this. I would implore Creality to design all their printers from now on with sufficient clearance to allow those larger aftermarket print knobs. Because they are a huge improvement. I'm going to pause you again until I'm finished. Don't forget to move around all the bolts while you have the wrench in your hand and make sure they're all tight. Because that will determine your print quality. I notice all these need just a slight bit of tightening. Not much, but they do move a tiny bit. That's the tightest one so far. Same thing, come around to the front, make sure they're all tight. There are two on each front. That one needed tightening. This one needed tightening. Check these two here. That one's nice and tight. Didn't even move. That one needed a little click. That one needed a little bit of a turn. And that one needed some tightening. That one needed a decent amount of tightening. Alright, and then we will do the other side here that we did not tighten yet these you want very tight don't go crazy you don't want to strip the screws but you want these very tight because that will determine your print quality when it wobbles around because what you want is that nice strong rigid frame look at that no flex right? I, the printer picks itself up before it flexes and that's what you want you want that stupidly strong frame Double check these up top. So remember you have six on the front, six on the back, four on the bottom, and four on the top. I also noticed they added the brace that I enjoy up here, you can see, for your Z-Rod. And it does not engage the Z-Rod. The Z-Rod is loose inside of there. I don't know if you can see that. It's loose, which is what you want, because you want the Z-Rod to move if it needs to. And this is an injection molded part, not 3D printed. So. Good job, Creality. I think 3D printing a part is fine, but that is a very nice professional touch to have a proper part up there. Just makes the machine seem that much more industrial, like it's going to last. Same thing here, no 3D printed parts. It's all metal. Uh, they're still using the plastic on here, but I had no problems with the first one, so I think it's fine. It's not 3D printed. It is ABS molded. Feels plenty strong. So don't forget, two here, two here, two here two here, two here, two here, here, and here. Make sure they are tight because they are the primary structure for this entire printer. And you want them as rigid as possible. Just don't go crazy and strip them. Here's your T-brace on the side. So you line these horizontally and these vertically. And it slips right in just like that. Doesn't even resist. Now, the way these work, they're hammer nuts. So they will fit, they're drop-in hammer nuts, so they fit inside the rail. So you have to loosen them 
after you put it through so that they can go beyond this extrusion edge here and then when you retighten them they will turn and lock in place if they don't turn and lock in place it doesn't work so I'll be right back after I finish tightening those up for the top one and the two side ones you can actually look in through the side here I can't show you that in a video it's way too small for a wide angle video you can see the nut move back and then as you tighten you'll actually see the nut turn and when you see it turn you know you're good the thing I did notice is that there's no T-brace for this side and I don't think it needs it. I think that is plenty strong. There is no wiggle whatsoever in this. And this T-brace should be enough with this smaller frame to keep any stress unduly transferring to these two screws here. I think it's plenty strong. I don't anticipate a problem with that. Before I go connecting anything, the next thing is to check the rest of your concentrics. Because remember, you have a triangle here, a triangle here, and a triangle here, and they need to be tight. All of mine are a little loose. You can see that? A little bit of wiggle. See, tighten up that concentric, and that'll stop that wiggle. Remember, you don't want it tight. You want it just tight enough that there's no movement. Okay? So loosen it till you wiggle. And then you creep it tighter and tighter until there's no wiggle, then stop. There's no reason to go further. All you're going to do is increase drag, increase wear and tear, and add noise to your prints. And so this is all loose. See how that's, this side's moving and that side's not? That's because this one here is loose. These are big time loose, so these all need to be tightened up. Oh, well, now this has no wiggle whatsoever. It's solid. And the difference was the concentric nut from here to here. That was the only difference from there to there. I had to turn a lot more to get it tight, but when I went from a little bit of wiggle to no wiggle, that's all it was. Don't over tighten. You're just going to wear out your wheels. You're going to Increase your friction and drag, and you're going to add ghosting and ringing to your prints unnecessarily. You want it just tight enough that there's no wiggle. This one appears to be tight here as well, but I'm going to double check that the fan shroud uh, screws are nice and tight because they were loose on the other one, which causes the rattle. These strips super, super easy. Be careful. Don't over tighten them. And you can, at this point, you can attach your PTFE tube if you wish. This just pops right here like that. Done. You hear, you'll hear it pop. You'll feel it pop, and you're done. Next up is to tighten up these because this is no good. Took just a tiny little turn to tighten that up. Remember, this is a cantilevered design, so it is going to be. Um, it's never going to be perfectly tight. Turn it this way. And if you have that too tight, uh, when you go to raise this and lower this, you'll notice that it'll tilt, and you don't want that. There we go. See? I had it too tight, so what happened is this would go up first, and then that would follow. And now that I loosened it a tiny bit, you see there's no lag anymore. Is this tight now? Yep. Nice and snug. It doesn't wobble like it did before. Over tighten that. And what will happen is this this will chase this. You'll move up, and you'll see this move up first, and then that follows. And when you move down, you'll see this move down first, and then that follows. And you don't want that, because that's going to cause this entire segment of the plane to tilt when it's going up or down. And you definitely don't want that. So over-tightening is as bad as under-tightening. All you want to do is take the slop out of it. See, I move up and down here. There's no slop. It stays put. Good. Now... I haven't connected anything electrical yet because I went through and I checked pretty much every single nut and bolt on the machine to make sure they're all tight. I noticed a couple of these were a little loose. I noticed a, um, the hammer nut wasn't fully engaged on the Y limit switch, so I corrected that. I double checked all the couplers and pulley grub screws, made sure they were all tight. I made sure the compression connectors were snug, just a tiny bit, easy to strip. You probably won't strip this one, but this is actually, yeah, it's still plastic, I think. Is that still plastic? Yep, still plastic. Um, check your grub screws on your drive gear. Make sure that's snug. Make sure everything's tight. Um, these need to snuggen up a little bit, just a tiny bit. It wasn't much. They weren't off by much, but it was just enough that I wanted to make sure. Ooh, that was loose. You definitely don't want your Z motor to be loose. 
Okay, they are nice and tight. The two I forgot to check. Z motor is facing rearward. Everything looks good. I am now ready to begin electrically connecting the brain box to the rest of the machine. Do remember to check your 221 10 volt switch. It should come default to 220, which is safe. Because if you plug a 220 into a 110 outlet, nothing happens. It's dangerous when it's set to 110, because if you plug a 110 into a 220 outlet, magic smoke comes out. You don't want that. <laughs> so mine was correctly set to 220. I switched it to 110 since I'm in the United States. And do be careful with some of these screws. They are a little on the loose side. For example, um, this wrench is defective. This end works fine. This end does not. It's a little smaller than it should be. So when you try to use the ball end, it doesn't fit. It just spins. But this end fits fine. Just cheap wrench. But um, I really wish if Creality ever watches one of my videos, please never use these, what do you call them, the, the, the dome mushroom um, screws. Only use this kind. This kind here. The cap screws. Use the cap screws everywhere. All the other ones suck. Just use the cap screws. Adjust your design so that the cap screws work because these dome shaped ones, I don't know what they're called, they suck. They always strip, they're always poorly made, but the cap screws, they work every single time. So, printer manufacturers, cap screws only. Repeat after me, cap screws only. <laughs> Something, I'm getting ready to connect the electricals, and the heat bed is a plug. Not a fan of that, but they do do it right. They use both of the available pins for the positive and both of the available pins for the negative. Since uh, most of them that I've seen that burn up like on the ANA E10, they, um, they burn up slowly and barely and they're only using one pin. So by using both pins, you're splitting the amperage between two pins. So each pin's only taking half the number of amps. In theory, it should be okay. But I would prefer if they switch back to like what they did with the CR10 soldered connection on the print bed and a screw-in connector on the brain box like they did with the CR-10. Switch back to that reality. They did that with the hot ed but not with the heat bed and I really would prefer you guys switch back to this for your heat bed using the soldered connection on the heat bed. That would be very good. Your Z-limit switch and your Z-motor if you notice that the cable doesn't reach, like you can't spread them apart far enough, that's okay. If you just grab the cable, this slides down, giving you access to more cable. When you're done, you can slide it back in there to snug things up. Okay. Now, when you do this, this is something I like to do. First of all, you want to make sure that this one here is on top. That this is on top of all the other cables, because this has to raise up and down your extruder and your x-axis motor this hat this cable has to go up and down with this gantry so you have to make sure this doesn't get caught on anything so you want to make sure this is above all of the other cables now what I like to do is I snug up my limit switch here and my X um, motor and I take all three cables and I zip tie them to this beam here so that if this gets pulled you can see there it's not pulling on these switches I want to make sure that when this gets tugged, that these plugs don't get tugged, because you don't want that coming loose. And I would like to have my Z motor on the bottom, and that's where some of that colored stuff that they put in here, this actually didn't come with any of the colored stuff, to um, secure these in one of the channels or something like that. Again, so that these connections don't get disturbed, and you don't have a print get messed up. Last connections will be, I might as well leave you run for this will be our Y motor right here. Right there and right here. And that is it. We are just about ready for initial power up. I like to keep the bed on the bottom so it doesn't grab anything. This is your hot end. I'm a little disappointed that Creality still doesn't have 
a method of securing this. You know, even just a, a screw hole here and a clip just to keep that in place. I, I, I would like that. Uh, I mean, it hasn't proven to be a problem, but it's one of those would be nice kind of things. Uh, that is it. We are electrically connected and everything is ready to go. Let's check out this here. I want to make sure this can. I'm pushing up very gently and I'm turning the, the motor. Making sure nothing grabs, make sure everything goes where it's supposed to. This should go in front of your gantry. And it looks like we have plenty of length on that cabling. That is our max right there. And there is plenty. That is a correction they have made that I am happy about. Ah, see here? This was on top. I don't want that. That one's longer. Let's get this over here like this. It's probably not important, but it gives me peace of mind. There we go. We can actually keep this somewhat... Actually, the Y is the limiting factor for how far away. There's plenty of slack in the Z and extruder cable now. So hopefully future CR10s will come with that improvement as well, with that little bit of extra slack there. So you have much more flexibility in where you can keep this box now without interfering with this operating correctly. So good job, Creality. It looks like they are actually listening to the issues that people have with the printers and making the appropriate corrections. That's a good thing. I still don't know why, but I know people like this. So here we go. The plastic. There you go. <laughs> we are plugged into power. All the electrical connections are made. Everything looks good to me. All the bolts are tightened up. Everything appears to work smoothly and operate correctly. I don't anticipate any problems. Let's turn it on. Creality 3D, printer does boot up. So let's home everything. Ah, it even says CR10 Mini, that's cute. <laughs> let's go to prepare, auto home. X moves, Y moves. Limit switches are working, Z is coming down. I'm gonna restart you when Z gets closer to the bottom. Z is almost down to the bottom and something else I noticed the air blower deflector appears to be the corrected design to properly deflect the airflow I hope and it is injection molded it is no longer 3d printed there is not as far as I can tell there isn't a single 3d printed part on this entire printer absolutely everything on this printer is either metal or injection molded and the only injection molded parts is this non-load bearing brace up here and this deflector for the fan and the extruder body which is so far proven to be fine I have thousands of hours on my CR10 and that's worked fine so I don't anticipate a problem with that and that's it it's all metal I am getting a temperature read let's touch the nozzle and see if it goes up be too cold in here for that to work. Oh, there it goes, 23 degrees. And, oh, our steppers are locked. Control. Let's see if the bed goes up. And we are getting 22 degrees on the bed. Let's heat it up. Prepare. Preheat PLA. Hey, it looks like that's another correction they made. It now heats up the bed and the nozzle simultaneously so you don't have to wait for one to heat up to get the other to heat up. So while that is heating up, I'm going to prepare to insert filament. 
Looks like the exact same filament that came with the first printer, that kind of um, milky white, slightly translucent white filament. It's fine. I never had a problem with it. Clean insert, no snagging, no grabbing, that's a good thing. Alrighty. Eight gigabyte SanDisk SD card this time. Oh, interesting. There's, an, there's a plastic um, filler shroud around the SD card slot. So no more accidentally inserting the SD card slot into an empty space and it shoots off somewhere inside the printer or breaking the SD card slot. That is nice. It can only go in one way and it fits perfectly. So, initialize SD card. Print from SD card. There's only one folder called CR10 Mini. I see a models folder. Looks like there's a Y axis wire protection. I'm going to look at that before I do anything with that. Ha! <laughs> There's a cat. We gotta print the cat. You can't not print the cat. Bed heated up nice and fast. It's only set to 45, but it heated up nice and fast. Um, oh, I didn't level. <laughs> you gotta level the print bed. Oh, jeez. Prepare. Move access. Auto home. Derp. <laughs> Disable steppers. Okay. I like those nice flat springs. I do love those. Got to the point where I can pretty much eyeball a bed level. Once I get the splooge off the nozzle. There we go. Eventually you can just see it. Pretty close. That's pretty close. Main. Print from SD. Cat! Must have the cat! Now, as always, turn your print speed down. Let's go 30%. 32% It's where it stops. Make sure your splooge is off there. Prime it. Because it always splooges, so you gotta just push it in there, prime it. Come here. All that extra splooge. Really need a flashlight. Oh yeah, it's laying down nice. There we go, 
that's the splooge that was stuck around the nozzle. What can I tell you? Nailed it first try. Didn't even have to adjust it. Beautiful. Boy, I really nailed that. I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I don't usually nail it that right. <laughs> That's nice. Good first layer. I see no issues whatsoever. I might be a tiny bit far away from the bed. Maybe. Or it might just be that I haven't cleaned off the tape with alcohol first. Huh, switch sides. I wonder why I did that. That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to move it a little bit further away from the bed. Just because that's usually, I'm talking a micro twist of these knobs. Looks good. Alright. I'm going to stop this for now and I will come back when more of the cat is done. Well, I wanted to wait until we got to this stage. It's still printing just fine because I wanted to hear the thermal controlled fan inside the control box turn on and I just heard it turn on. So there's another improvement that I've got to congratulate Creality on. It's significantly quieter. Steppers are still relatively noisy, not crazy so, not as bad as the CR-10. Maybe it's because of the smaller steppers, don't know. Um, but it's not nearly as noisy. This is tolerable. I'm still probably going to upgrade the fans to quiet fans, but this is actually a tolerable noise level. I'm going to be quiet for a moment. Let me, let me turn this fan off. Now, the only noise that's happening right now is the printer, and I'm going to be quiet for a moment so you can hear it. Hear that? That was a thermal fan kicking on. Not bad. I mean, that's, that's a tolerable noise level if it holds. Now, one thing I don't like is that I can't change the jerk and acceleration on the control box. At least, not while it's printing. Um, there's no control option while it's printing. Maybe I can change it when it's not printing, but I'm not going to cancel this. I'll have to wait till later. But I hope I can still change that because I don't like the way it jerks around. I mean, it's, it's not doing anything it's not supposed to do. They all do that. Um, but I like turning down jerk for better quality. Um, when you turn down the jerk, you don't feel it jerk the table at all anymore when you turn that down. And you get better print quality when you do that. Uh, that's it. I will come back for one last bit when I have the cat finished. Alrighty. There you have it. CR-10 Mini has been built. I, so far, have zero real issues. Obviously, I haven't used it yet, so that's just with a grain of salt. Although I don't anticipate too much of a problem. I have come, I've gotten to the point where I pretty much trust Creality, unless they do something stupid and dumb. <laughs> um, printing a Marvin now. I only had to make one tiny tweak to the bed level, and it's perfect. As you can see, I do my large circle around the Marvin here. Uh, I only had to tweak this one. This one's a little hair. Perfect. Here is the cat. It's not a Decapa cat, so they fixed the cat. Not as clean a print as the CR-10, I don't think. I think they had it going too fast, or the G-code was different. I mean, it's not bad. It's a great print, but it isn't that, or it might be the filament, but it isn't that perfect that the CR-10 cat was. That was well-tuned G-code. But now I'm running my own tune code. So we'll see how that comes out. You will have to wait till the next video. GearBest sent me this printer for nothing. 
So I was paid roughly what 340 bucks to review this printer because this printer is worth 340 dollars. Link down below. <laughs> um, of course, if you decide to buy a printer and use my link, I get credit no matter what printer you buy. So if you decide you don't want this, you want a CR10, I still get credit no matter what link you click on. Or click on one of my links. Um, I think this printer is going to be very cool. I'm going to reserve judgment until I throw all my test prints at it. So I got a Marvin printing now, then I'll do a Benchy, then I'll do a vase, then I'll do the two rockets, and then I'll do the big low poly vase at max height. And I'm doing this in the Esun PLA Blue. It's one of my favorite colors available. It's the incredible Esun PLA Pro. And the, this is the same color as I did Luby Sorceress in. So I like this color. In fact, I gotta order another roll, get low. <laughs> I don't wanna be out of this color. But I'm glad to see that they fixed this. One disappointment, um, while the SD card doesn't have any, oh, I didn't check the other folders, it probably does have instructions. So the SD card has instructions folders, driver folders, and model folders. They included a Y tension print. You know, for the, the heat bed plug? For the CR-10. But that can't work on this one. So I don't know why they included that. We'll see. I actually, now that I think about it, I didn't actually look at the G-code they included. So it's possible they just called it CR-10 and it is for this. But um, my hunch is it's the the one-off thingy verse for the CR-10. But um, they also include the brackets for some reason. The, this plate, um, these two pieces here, and I want to say this plate here, I think. I don't know what. I don't know why they include those. They also include the code for the fan. I'm not sure why they include that. And the code for the mount for the Z stepper. I guess in case you break them, or just people expect that, so they include it, because all the parts on here are injection molded. I mean, these are all high quality parts. There's nothing 3D printed anywhere on this printer. Not one single piece of this printer is 3D printed, which I find very pleasing. I mean, actually, are these? Nope. Even these end caps are injection molded and say Creality 3D. Not bad. That's a nice touch. I'm hoping that means Creality is all in and they're going to go um, mainstream with their printers, which is why they would invest in the injection molding for all these parts. I'm hoping to see good things from them. It would be nice to have a an actual original um, Chinese company producing high quality printers. That would be fantastic. Because this these printers are not clones. These Creality designed these. They're I believe as far as I'm concerned, they are the first um, Chinese printer company that I've ever seen to actually come up with their own design that was not only original, but good. <laughs> I mean the CR is amazing. Seriously. Go away. Pest. <laughs> So I'm hoping for good things from them. We shall see. I mean, I'm not going to assume good things, but I'm hoping for it. And I'll give you a sneak peek. What are you doing? Oh, wrong axis. Okay. There we go. At the Marvin. Perfect. No issues whatsoever. Wow. That's actually really perfect. I'll be switching to the other. That's really perfect. Huh. That's better than the CR10. I'm starting to I'm starting to see that it really does come down to printer size. This is better than the CR10. This printer is half the size of the CR10. The Ender is better than this, and the Ender is a quarter the size of this. So really, mass really does come into play when it comes to print quality. You just got to slow down on the bigger printers. I see zero issues when I switch to the higher quality camera for my next video. You'll get close-ups of all these parts that I'm going to print. And we'll go from there. Thank you for watching my video. I appreciate it. Let your friends know. You guys have a good day.